this is Brett from Adventure Otaku. Um, back at the desk, this is a uh, MSR Whisperlite stove, which is sort of like the key piece of, of stove gear for ex uh, expeditions. Um, I couldn't do 30 day uh, trips with a stove other than a white gas, a liquid fuel stove. Um, super reliable, super uh, um, uh, easy to work with. It, they look complex, but they're really pretty straightforward. Um, some people shy away from them because you have to prime them when you light them, and it takes a couple minutes, and it looks scary because you get a big ball of flame, but it's really not that bad, particularly once you get a feel for your own stove. Um, this is a, a straight-up whisper light. There are three different kinds of whisper lights. There, there's this one, which burns just white gas, which is sometimes called called Coleman fuel, sometimes called um, camp fuel. Um, it's all the same stuff. Um, there's another one, a whisper light international, which has a thicker fuel line here and a and a wick uh, or a mantle in the in the above the priming cup. Um, and that's a multi-fuel stove, and it'll burn kerosene and unleaded gasoline as well as white gas. The white gas should always be your first choice. And then there is a, a relatively new, just a just two or three, maybe four years old, the Whisperlite Universal, which you can change out a jet in the bottom and the mount on the end for the fuel, and it'll run canister fuel. So it's uh, incredibly versatile in that you can run just about any fuel you want. This stove right here is at least 15 years old, probably more, and has done a million trips with me, and I absolutely love it. Um, and I was teaching a class with it the other day, and for the first time, it wouldn't light. And you can see that it's, it's pretty dirty, um, uh, pretty sooty, and that's from the priming process. Um, and so it is almost certainly, the problem is almost certainly that the fuel line is clogged. And so I could fix just the fuel line um, or clean out just the fuel line, um, which all you need to do that are a, are a pair of pliers like this. Um, but it's so sooty, I'm going to take apart the whole thing and clean it. Um, and so I will need that pair of pliers just to get the wire out of the fuel line. Um, and uh, But I'm gonna take the whole thing apart and clean it. And so I thought it was a good opportunity to show people what that looks like. Um, I am going to put on a pair of gloves just because it is so sooty. Um, and then we'll get started. This should just take about a minute to take apart. And then I'll show you how we're going to clean it. So if I were just cleaning the fuel line, I would take a pair of pliers like this, a pair of vice grips, and clamp down on that and pull it out and maybe work it in and out a little bit just to, to get the soot going. But really what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this a little bit, but really what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the whole thing out. So this was up top. This was up here running through the fuel line and um, that's why that's so dirty but we're gonna clean that up. And then to finish taking this thing apart, this unscrews, so this is the priming cup. We're just gonna unscrew that. And, and then work these legs off this central stem. Oh no, first I gotta get the fuel line. This is the fuel line. And this is the fuel jet. Let's get the pliers to get that out of there. And then that'll just unscrew. It could have been a clogged fuel jet, but I think it's more likely that it's the um, fuel line itself. Yeah, I can actually see right through there. So I know that's clean. And then this piece right in here, is the shaker jet. And so this is designed so that inside the jet, while you're hiking or doing whatever, it's moving back and forth. And that little needle, that little needle 
is uh, is cleaning the j the opening in the jet. Um, we're going to take them both out and uh, and clean them, and then these pieces will slide off. I said these pieces will slide off. There they go. And then this piece is just going to unscrew. You can see the soot that this is making. And then this whole piece comes apart. And so the fuel line has to stay connected um, it runs through this set of legs. And you just gotta be a little careful with these. They do have one way that they go back. Uh, oh, and that's not it, because that guy is upside down. There we go. So they go back together like that. Um, and there's only a couple ways. You can just reverse these two, because this one's gotta be on top. Um, and so those are the parts. That is a whisper light completely disassembled. Right, and here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna put the whole thing in a big Ziploc. outside and I'm going to spray it down with brake cleaner. So this was recommended to me by a, um, uh, a bike shop technician that I know, super knowledgeable guy. We're going to give it a shot and see how it works. He also said you could just pour in straight up white gas and, um, and let that soak for a day or two and that should do it. But I'm going to try this because I've already got it. So we're going to see how this goes. Um, so I'm going to spray the bag, get everything coated, and then I'm just going to let it sit for a couple days and then uh, clean it all off and put it back together. We'll see how it looks. Okay, so after less than 24 hours in, um, in a solvent, in brake cleaner, um, we are back in business. You can see just how much cleaner this thing is. Um, so essentially what I did was I had already disassembled it. I put it in the bottom of a clean bucket. I um, sprayed it liberally with a can of brake cleaner, um, and actually I used the entire can of brake cleaner. And then I took it out and rinsed it off and, um, and did a second soaking. And then I left it overnight. I pulled it out um, just a little while ago. We are not at quite 24 hours. We're at probably 20 hours, 21 hours. Um, significantly cleaner. And then I test fired it to see if it would work, because remember the whole problem was that it didn't work, and it fired right up. It did take a little while to... Um, um, to burn as as easily, as smoothly as it used to. Um, and I think that that was probably just residue from the brake cleaner uh, in the line and, and in all the parts. So it just took a little while longer um, to get going. But, but by the time I was done, she was going beautifully. And so I don't know if you can see this. This is absolutely clean. This section over here I left dirty. Uh, in part because it's hard to get to, but in part so you could see that's where the soot builds up. And so that's just incredibly clean. Um, this is another whisper light, so you can see what the bottom of it looks like compared, just so much cleaner. That worked really well. So I'm, I'm super excited. Um, the only part about putting it back together that is um, tricky is getting the legs in the right order. Um, so maybe take a picture before you start taken it apart. I had another stove to compare it to. I had another stove to compare it to, which uh, which worked well. That doesn't want to go in there. Maybe I got it in the wrong order. Um, but in any case, that's the, the soot is why I wrap it up in a bandana before I put it away. Um, so that's it. That's cleaning your whisper light. We'll be back soon.